Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. And today I'm going to talk to you about the GNLH analog trigger. And I'm quoting a paper which has is used in uh, fertility preservation in cancer patients. And this is quite a unique paper. And as many of you who hear my talks and who come to the, the course I do will uh, see that I am a, I'm, a, I'm a great believer that we should aim towards using the, the antagonists in the uh, protocols because they tend to allow us uh, two benefits. One is it allows us to give use an analog trigger to lower the chance and prevent ovarian hyperstimulation. And, and the second thing is that if it just makes the cycle more friendlier because it makes the cycle shorter and makes it easier and almost 90 9% of all the treatments that I carry out uh, tend to be using the antagonist protocol. And when we come to cancer patients, then these are very challenging areas because in cancer patients who come in for fertility preservation, there is a very small window of opportunity which is available. And, and these patients are extremely uh, anxious. They are, they've had to make a very important and a very crucial decision in, in, in at a sudden point of their life. And one of the things that when they proceed with treatment, many of them will come with random starts. What we do know is that a GNRH analog improves the safety in ovarian hyperstimulation. It in fact lowers the chance of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. There are some reports that say if you give the analog trigger, you're more likely to get more mature eggs. And there is in fact very limited data that women who have cancer and in those cases, if you use a GNRH analog trigger, you may end up getting more mature oocytes. And that's something which we would study. And these were cases where, uh, you know, cases were referred to the hospital for fertility preservation. And in all the other cases, HCG triggers were used. And the, in the women with cancer, letrozole, 5 mg a day, was used right through stimulation. And these were mainly for breast cancer. And the antagonist protocol was used and as a trigger a four milligram of GNRH agonist and lupride acetate was used and the oocyte retrieval was performed between 35 to 36 hours later now have a look at the results and the number of total oocytes are very much the same the number of mature oocytes was significantly more in the analog arm and we looked at the, per the percentage of M2 sites which were preserved. And now it was close to 89% which agonist trigger and it was 73% in, with the HCG trigger. Fertilization rates also were slightly better with the agonist trigger. And the embryos were cryopreserved in the uh, agonist trigger more than that with the HCG trigger. So now, if you have a look at what happens with the estrogen levels and the gonadotrophin and the M2s, it looks like HCG does better. But if you look at the number of oocytes obtained per unit of AMH, and that's an important sign, the agonist trigger did better and gave more oocytes. In fact, using the agonist would give you almost three more mature oocytes and you know, pronuclear embryos for freezing compared to an HCG trigger. Uh, the earlier one was that one where we used letrozole stimulation. So the next comparison between those where letrozole was not used and only gonadotrophin was used. And there again, it showed that the best indicator of, of mature oocytes seemed to be estrogen and in an HCG cycle. And the amount of estrogen that rose in an HCG cycle may give you an idea of uh, the metaphase 2 oocytes. But when you compare it to the AMH and to the antral follicle count, giving an a GNRH analog trigger significantly increase the number of M2 oocytes, which are mature oocytes. Well, the question comes up, and I keep, we keep asking this question, what happens when you give the analog trigger? And it's something that does not happen when you give the HCG trigger. And HCG it mimics LH, but it's not LH. And ovulation gives you a release of two hormones, the LH rise, which starts the process of disruption of follicle, and an FSH rise. And that FSH is needed by follicles to be able to reach competency. 
And that's something which you, you, you will start realizing when you start using more of the analog trigger. Also what happens is as soon as the endogenous FSH levels comes up, it starts giving improving the epidermal growth factors. Again, these are needed for the disruption and maturity of follicles. Now, in fact, this non-OHSS uh, benefits of analog trigger can be extended to patients with cancer and it will probably improve the quality of eggs we can obtain and, and the reason why it is important is that these women probably will have the only one chance of uh, uh, getting eggs to freeze and embryos to freeze and in those cases trying to put them on the long protocol, long agonist protocol, in fact is, is, is very much defeating the purpose. And I think in those cases, and I'll, I'll keep asking you, is try and change your protocol, so genetic antagonist protocol. And it is easy to batch patients even on that protocol. Using the long protocol, in fact, or to a large number of cases, risks ovarian hyperstimulation. And in some cases, you are not able to give the, the best results to patients. So I hope I'll be able to convince you at, at some stage to be able to even if you decide to batch your cases and do that in groups of patients, you'll be able to do it with the antagonist protocol. So that is one of the benefits which I would say comes from the analog trigger. And I think study after study seems to be coming up saying like in this study, even in cancer patients, you will give rise to more mature oocytes. And I hope you've enjoyed the, the lecture and again, spread it. And once again, as I said, I'm hoping that all these lectures, all the evidence that's presented from various papers on a regular uh, time may, may hopefully improve the, the, you know, the outcome for some patients at least uh, in our care. And I think knowledge which we uh, possess, the more we share it, uh, I think overall medical care tends to get better. Thank you very much.